In this video, we learn how to estimate the mean value of grouped continuous data written in a frequency table, and to learn how we're going to work through the example that we see here, in which we're told the heights in centimeters of 200 randomly selected people were recorded and summarized in the table below. So that's the frequency table we see here. And we're told, showing all of you working, estimate the mean height. Okay, first of all, because we're dealing with grouped continuous data, we can see that on each row of this frequency table, we're given two things. First of all, we're given a class interval, like the one we see here. And this interval tells us, well, on this first row, that we're dealing with heights going from 150 centimeters included up to 160 centimeters excluded. The second column we have here, the frequency column, tells us that there were 25 people that fell in that class interval. And something similar could be said for each of the class intervals and their corresponding frequencies on each of the following rows. So for example, there were 43 people whose height was greater than or equal to 180 and less than 190 centimeters. But because we don't know the exact height of each of the people we're dealing with here, indeed all we know is which class interval they lie in, to make an estimate of the mean height, we're going to add a column to our table, and in that column we're going to write the mid-value of each of these class intervals. Here's what I mean. I'll go ahead and add a column right here, like so, and the top of that column I'll name it mid-value. Mid-value. There we go. And in fact, in parentheses, I'll write x. There we go. And in fact, I'll quickly complete this table. Okay. Now, for the first cell we have here, we're looking for the mid-value of the class interval going from 150 to 160 centimeters. Well, halfway between 150 and 160 would be 155 centimeters. So I'll write 155. Similarly, the mid-value between 160 and 170 would be 165. For the next row, the mid-value of 170 and 180 would be 175. And carrying on this way, for 180 to 190, we'll have 185. And last but not least, from 190 to 200, the mid-value will be 195. And I should say, these mid-values are quite easy to find. Indeed, finding the mid-value of 150 and 160, or the mid-value of any of these pairs of numbers here, is relatively simple. But if ever we were given more complicated class intervals, with numbers that aren't quite as friendly as the ones we have here, it's worth mentioning that the mid-value, and I'll take 195 as an example here, can always be found by calculating the average of the lower bound and the upper bound of the class interval. In other words, 195 could have been calculated as 190 plus 200 over 2. And by all means check, that's equal to 390 over 2, which is equal to 195. More generally, the mid-value can always be found by calculating the average of the lower bound of the class interval and the upper bound of a class interval, where LB stands for lower bound and UB stands for upper bound. Okay, now that we've found all the mid-values, we're going to add one more column to our table. And so I'll quickly construct that here, like so. And for each row in this column, we'll calculate F times X. And don't worry, I'll explain that in just a second. Let me just quickly complete the cells of this table, like so. Now, the F that I've written here corresponds to the frequency. And in fact, I could add in parentheses here F. The X that I've written here corresponds to the various mid-values we just found. And so for this cell here on the first row, when I write F times X, we need to calculate the frequency on that row, so 25, times the mid-value of that row, so that's 155. And by all means check, but with my calculator, 25 times 155 is equal to 3875. So I'll write that here, that's 3875. I move down to the next row, and I need to complete this cell, so that's going to be 45 times 165. And so again on my calculator I do 45 times 165, and that's equal to 7425. And so I write that, that's 7425. I carry on to the next cell, 
So that's going to be 57 times 175. So that's 57 times 175, which equals to 9,975. So I write that, that's 9,975. And I carry on. For the next cell, I have 43 times 185. That's 43 times 185. And that's equal to 7,955. And the last cell we need to fill in here will have 30 times 195. And again, I use my calculator, 30 times 195. And that's equal to 5,850. All right, now at this stage, we are ready to estimate the mean. And for that, the formula we'll use states that the mean value, so x with the bar on top, is equal to the sum of all the f times x's divided by n, where n, where n is equal to the sum of all the frequencies. Now, if this notation worries you or confuses you a bit, do not worry. What we're saying at the top here is the sum of all the f times x's. And remember, we just calculated all the f times x's. Indeed, we have all those in this column here. So this numerator is the sum of all of these values. And so what we typically do here is write the total of all the values we have at the bottom of the column. And so I'll make a cell for that right here. Okay, so in this cell, I'll write the total of all the values I have in the cells above it. So let's see, on my calculator again, that would be 3,875, plus the second row, that's 7,425, plus the third value here, so plus 9,975, plus 7,955, so that's 7,955, plus the last value we have there, 5,850. Done. And as we can see on my calculator screen, that's equal to 35,080. So in this formula here, this 35,080 is what we'll write on the numerator. It's the sum of all the f times x's. And in fact, I'll already write that at the bottom of the screen here. The mean height, or I'll just say x with a bar on top of it, is equal to the sum of all the f times x's, which we've just seen is 35,080. And so I'll write that and I'll stick to that color as well, 35,080, over the n that we see here. And I wrote underneath that that n is equal to the sum of all the f's. In other words, n is equal to the sum of all of these frequencies. And so at the bottom of this frequency column, I'll go ahead and add the total we get when we add them all together. And so I'll add a cell underneath here, like so. Notice that these frequencies should add up to 200, since we were told that 200 people had been randomly selected. Nevertheless, it's worth checking. So on my calculator again, I'll go ahead and add all of these values. So that's 25 plus 45 plus 57 plus 43 plus 30. Done. And we can see quite clearly that the sum of all the frequencies is 200. And so n, the sum of all the frequencies, is 200. And so we write that on this denominator here. Finally, with our calculators to estimate the mean, we simply calculate this. So that would be 35,080 divided by 200. And I click on enter, and there we go. An estimate of the mean height of these 200 randomly selected people is 175.4 centimeters which, rounding to three significant figures, we could say that the mean height, so x with a bar on top of it, is equal to 175 centimeters. And that's the final answer. And there we go. That's how we can estimate the mean value of grouped continuous data. And that's it for this tutorial.